Welcome to our very first Celebration Church Sunday service of 2021. How grateful we are to be in a new year. To those of you who have logged on or are logging on, or those who will watch much later in the day, we want to say welcome to you. As we do that, one thing that we have in common, no matter where we are in the globe, is our ability to worship. So would you join us as we praise and worship our living God?
about the beginning of this year, I was drawn to Mark 12, verse 41, where we see the story of Jesus sitting down at the place where the offerings were put and watching the crowd putting their money in one by one. And a poor widow comes along and puts in her widow's might as we have come to know it. What struck me is what Jesus had to say about that where he said that in spite of her poverty, in spite of her presumably low status, she was the one who gave the most out of everybody that had come to give. And I got to thinking about how 2020 was not an easy year for many of us. We had 
ups and downs in terms of the financial situation, the economy, but we still have an opportunity to give and to know that our God sees as we give. So whatever you and your family have purposed, or maybe what you as an individual have purposed, and you have it in your hand, if you would look to God and say to him, Lord, I am bringing what I have to give today. Lord, would you look with favor upon my offering? I will pray now. Father, we thank you that you are the God who sees and that you understand the thoughts and intents of our heart. As we start a new year, would you look upon our offerings with favor and remember us, O Lord, throughout the year 2021. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Today we're going to be talking about prayer and fasting. We have come to that time of the year again where we will set aside 21 days, 21 days from the 4th of January to the 24th of January mm -hmm. as a church family across all the celebration churches for a time of prayer and fasting. And I'm looking forward to it, Pastor Nikki. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. You know, um, Josh, this is a time that um, for as many years as I can personally remember, it's a time that Pastor Tom and Bonnie have asked us to set this time aside as a family. Right, right. So we come into um, a corporate time of prayer and fasting. Yeah. And um, it really is a time that um, we can begin to reflect we can begin to um, engage yeah. with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. It's a time that we can begin to think about the year ahead. Right. And you know, we all know what we've been through in 2020. Mm, yeah. This has not been an yeah. easy year for right. most people. Yeah. But we're always expectant that next year it's going to be better because God's taking us from glory to glory. Yeah, and so it. this helps us to just establish what's going to happen the next year. I'm always yeah. of the mindset that, you know what, we want to seize the year before it tries to seize us. Wow, that's good. And so good. it's good for us to come together and to just seek the face of God. He says, because you don't seek me in vain. Yeah. And so it is a very, very important uh, time for all of us um, to set aside time yeah. to seek the Lord in prayer and fasting. Wow. Thank you, Pastor Nikki. That's that's so good. So this yeah. is about us corporately. This it's is about us yes. being together as a family mm -hmm. that's it. That's and it. sharing in the spirit of prayer yes. and fasting. Yes. That's I want us to talk a little bit more about mm -hmm. uh, fasting and prayer, mm -hmm. Pastor Ray. Yes. You know, what are some of the uh, uh, the things to do during this period of fasting and praying? I, th I think uh, one of the first things that just uh, comes to mind, Josh, and uh, I think this is for all of us, is, is obviously uh, as it is a, a time of prayer and fasting, mm -hmm. uh, prayer becomes a critical part of it. Being in the Word becomes a critical right. part of yes. it. Right. You know what right. I mean? Because if we're just going without food, then, then, <laughs> then, then, then <laughs> we're on a diet. We're probably on, <laughs> on some form of a diet. You know? a so, diet. So, so I think that's a very crit critical okay. uh, aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Finding yourself in the place of prayer. Yes. Finding yourself in the place of the Word where you're looking into God's Word and, 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 and really seeing what is it that the Lord is saying to me during this time. Mm -hmm. I like that. Mm -hmm. I, I like that. Pastor Nikki, looking into God's word in this period of mm -hmm. time, uh, is that something we can we can do during a period of prayer and fasting? Absolutely. Um, some really um, good things to do are to perhaps study a character in the Bible right. that you really admire. Right. Right. Wow. Um, you may want to find a topic. Right. You know, if you're really struggling with something, the word of God is there to bring light and set you free. Right. And so as you study that topic, you might be battling with anger. You might be battling mm. with financial difficulties. Yeah. Um, as you go in and you really begin to study, I believe that you will find you'll have incredible breakthroughs yeah. um, during this time of prayer and fasting. That's good. And That's good. Um, just reading the Word even, yeah. you know, <laughs> meditating it. on That's the Word it. of God yeah. is yeah. amazing. A, yeah. Yeah. Very meditating, mm. reading the Word of God. That's right. Taking Studying. time to study mm. the Word of God. Mm. Pastor, you know, one of the things that uh, I know people try to do during a period of prayer and fasting is to make it effective. Mm. 
Yes, yes. You know, you yes. want that time of prayer and fasting to, yes. to be effective. Yes. You know? yes. So, um, what are some of the things that you, you can recommend or you, you've seen as, that can make that time really effective? One of the things that's very critical is, is, is committing to, 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 to making time yeah. to find yourself in, especially in that place of prayer. Right. Mm. And, and, and I think on an individual level, that's good for you to find yourself in that place. Yeah. Mm. You, you know yeah. what I mean? It's yeah. important to pray individually, but also that, that corporate man coming together yes. is also very critical. And that's what makes it effective, the fact that yeah, there's that's agreement. It. That's Absolutely. It. We're coming together as a family during this time of prayer and fasting. Definitely. And yeah. you know, one will put a thousand to flight, mm. but two, mm. ten thousand. Mm. That's it. The multiplication of this is incredible. Yeah. So we can accomplish great things yeah. Uh, yeah. Corporately, corporately as yeah, one right. unified person. Yeah. There comes anointing and a commanded blessing it as does. well. It mm. does. And I'm and glad you're referring that. to the word, yes. Pastor Nikki. I'm glad you're referring mm. to, to what the Bible teaches. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What does the Bible actually then say about mm. Uh, prayer and fasting. We're going to be doing this as a family, mm. but we also want to be led by what Scripture says. Mm. Yes, very definitely. And one of the Scriptures that Pastor Tom loves us to base our particular um, prayer and fasting on is Isaiah 58. 58 right. um, it's an incredible mm. passage of Scripture. Yeah. And it's, my Bible says for the heading, it, this is the true fast. fast. Wow. That's it. And That's when you go fast. through it, you will wow. see it's not just about going without food. Mm. Um, it's actually about extending yourself to others. Wow. Um, it's really, again, about letting the flesh be subdued okay. mm. as you allow the okay. spirit man to arise. Okay. And yeah. it's to reach out to others. It's to be generous to your workers. Wow. Um, yeah. It is to um, reach out to those that are less fortunate than you mm. are. Yeah. So it's so much bigger than just going without food. It is. It is. Yeah. You know, sometimes we think uh, when someone is fasting, they need mm. to to hide away somewhere and uh, sure. not be engaged with life. Mm. But Isaiah 58 really mm -hmm. paints a different mm. kind of picture. Very it, much it, so. It pays to go into the Word and mm. find out what this true fast exactly mm. actually is. looks like. Yeah. You know, so, so Pastor Ray, any, yeah. any other thoughts around Scripture for, for this period of fasting? I mean, why did Daniel do it? What, what was that all about? I, I think, you know what, uh, uh, in Daniel, yeah. uh, in yeah. chapter 10, it spoke about how uh, they took that time. Uh, to keep themselves, you know, from choice food, yeah. uh, from the stuff that they would normally right. handle. The Bible says uh, they set themselves to just uh, eat vegetables yeah. and 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 all that natural kind of okay. <laughs> okay. food. And, yeah. and and so I think that's a very critical part of of the type of fast uh, that we do corporately, which is the Daniel's fast. Okay. Is that is letting go of all the stuff that you right. you know you you, right. you would ordinarily say I can't go without this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, know, you, know, you know what I mean? And I know a lot of people have all their favorite kind of food. Yes, you know? So, so this is the time to, you know, to, to, to set that aside. And, yeah. and just say, for, for, for this time, you, yeah. you know what, God, we, we're seeking you. Yeah. And, 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 and we want to hear from you. Yeah. And, and, and so we lay this aside. And as Pastor Nikki had uh, spoke about Isaiah 58, yeah. uh, this is the time to be going out. And that food, that which you would have normally had, right. yes, you know, giving it, yeah. giving it. Yeah. Praying for people. Right. And the Bible promises that our light will break forth come when on. we do that. When we fast in this way, it says even healing will come. come. If you want to be healed, you know, this just, is the just, time. just take yeah. God at His word yeah. and, and test Him. He says, test me and, yeah. and see if I'll not do it. Yeah. yeah, we're expecting a lot from the spirit of prayer and fasting. Absolutely. And, uh, the more informed you are, the better. You know, Definitely. So we perish for a lack of knowledge, knowledge. most mm. of the time. Mm. So we do. that's why the knowledge of what the Word says about it is very, very excellent. You know, I, I love the way you've put it, that um, mm. what we know is going to help us uh, determine, or rather we'll determine whether we live mm. or, or we die. We yes. perish for a lack. We perish for a lack, a lack of, of knowledge. knowledge. We do. Know. So mm. we've got a brochure um, that's out, that's available for mm -hmm. For people who need more information about yes. uh, what it's, the guidelines are. It's quite detailed, okay. actually. Yeah. So it's something that we all need to get a hold of. Where do, where do we get it? What can we do to, to get some more so, details? So, so, so definitely, if, if you're in one of our FOC churches, yeah. uh, this prayer and fasting brochure will be circulated to your, your pastor. 
and and so probably through the teams in your church he will probably make that available to you but if for some reason you don't get your hands on it uh, we have our call center number uh, it's a whatsapp number if you can just message to that number and just request for the prayer and fasting brochure uh, it will be made available to you and and so i think everyone has an opportunity to to, yes. to definitely get their hands on that prayer and, yeah. and fasting brochure yeah. if, if they're requiring information from there. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. That, that's good to know. I'm glad to know that there's tools, there are resources that our there pastors are so have made many. available yes. so that we don't walk in the darkness. Right. Absolutely. But we'll be able to see where we're going. Mm -hmm. And, you know, are there physical benefits to fasting, Pastor Nikki? Are, they, are we just spiritually here? Is there a benefit for me going without food for 21 days, but meeting with my brothers and sisters in prayer? Is there, what are some of the benefits we can look forward to in this period? Um, the benefits, um, you know, I'm reluctant to say this, but I will say it. You will lose a little bit of weight. <laughs> <laughs> like you can great. lose a little bit of weight. That's good. But to be honest, um, the benefits, often you won't see them immediately. Now, here we go. This is it. Right. But as right. after the fast, this is what I've generally found, yeah. after the fast, yeah. you will begin to see so many answers to prayer. Wow. Wow. Um, you know, I've seen in times like this, you will see relationships healed. Wow. As Pastor Ray pointed out, physical healing begins to spring. Actually, it says in Isaiah 58, it will spring forth speedily. Wow. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Um, it talks about destroying yokes. Yeah. yeah, that's right. It can actually destroy yeah. yokes. And so my take is when we're doing this together corporately, right. it's amplified, it's accelerated, yes. I believe. Yeah. And then, yeah. and then, then the other thing is, we're dealing with so many uh, monumental issues yes. in yes. our lives, yes. and 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 the strength, largely, mm. you yeah. know, for going through those those, those mm. situations comes yeah. from that place of prayer and fasting. Yeah. And and yes. and so during this time, believe God mm. that He indeed believe He God. will supply the strength yes. that you need to push through. Yeah, Amen. let's believe God. That's, let's mm. believe that's God, that's Pastor that's Ray. Mm. Thank you for that. Thank you for helping us remember. This is about prayer. And fasting. Yes. You know, so the two are working together. This yes, is, yes. we're not just pulling one thing and running mm. with that, but yeah. we're allowing for a combination mm. to happen here. Yes. You know, so. And absolutely. And um, just another thing that you will find another benefit yeah. is the revelation that begins to ah, come. There we go. Mm. Yeah. Once you get revelation, Pastor Bonnie says you have permission. Yeah. Mm. And um, definitely you will begin to see a lot of revelation, things that suddenly you are blinded to, your eyes are now wow. open. I'm excited about and that. And the light That's comes good. in. That's good. I'm so excited about that. It, there, there are just so many untold benefits, wow. really. Wow. Mm. Spiritual benefits. Physical, physical benefits, benefits yeah. uh, there's so much going on, even as a family, as we do it together, mm -hmm. there's yes. relational benefits as yes. a result. Yes. You know, yes. if, we, if we really engage as a mm -hmm. family across all of our churches, then we're going to see something amazing for 2021. Definitely. I believe Definitely. so. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Celebration Church family, let's plug in. Let's get into this together as a family. 4th of January to the 24th of January, our period of prayer and fasting. We love you. God bless you. You are an amazing God, and we worship you. Father, we bask in your presence, Lord, knowing that in your presence there is fullness of joy and peace forevermore. Oh. hands I come to you oh God I will bless your name you turn my morning into gladness and yes you may all things beautiful to you to you to you I I bring this and of grace to you, to you, to you. I bring this sacrifice of grace to you, to you, to 
Sister Church 
in Harare, Zimbabwe, Celebration Church joining us today for this message. Would you welcome our congregation from Celebration Church in Africa? We love you so much. Pastor Tom and Pastor Bonnie are pastors over there, and I've had the privilege to be there many years and, and share with this wonderful congregation, and they're joining us for this message this weekend. Well, what a year we've been experiencing, huh? The isolation, the uncertainty, and this pandemic that has wreaked havoc, not only on us in the United States, but literally around the world. And, and you know, I, I read an interesting statistic the other day. Our national crisis hotline, the calls that have come in have increased by 893%. Hello. That talks about a nation that's in crisis. We have a world in crisis. Our neighbors are in crisis. Many of us have walked through crisis in this year. But I kept being reminded through all this time and when this spirit of anxiety that really has gripped our nation in many ways, I'm, I'm shocked at how that, and you know what? I've had to battle it myself. I would sense this kind of a heaviness of the spirit of anxiety try to come over me every once in a while. I'm going, wait a minute, wait a minute. I rebuke that in Jesus' name. I'm not, I'm not to walk with a spirit of fear on me or anxiety on me. And this voice kept echoing and reminding me it came down through the ages of time. Matter of fact, there was a man in major crisis who made this bold declaration. He said, I found the secret. I found it. I found the secret of peace and confidence in times of crisis. Wow. 1,959 years ago, he said that. His name was the Apostle Paul. The year is AD 61. He's in Rome in prison, where ultimately Paul would find his death in Rome. But he writes to the church at Philippi, where he had also been in prison at one time. Paul, Paul was in and out of prison a lot in his day. You know, I, I don't think his, uh, his resume would have been very impressive for a search committee of a church. That one like, like, Paul, would you come? Well, I've been in multiple prisons. I just want you to know that, hello. But the Apostle Paul was a man very familiar with crisis. And, and he made this bold declaration. He said this, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He had found the secret that in his relationship in Christ, he had a confidence that he could face anything because you know why? He knew he would never have to face anything alone. It was in Christ. Now, most of you know the story of Paul. If you don't know, I would suggest you, you grab your Bibles at some time and read through it again in Acts chapter nine. Paul started off to be a persecutor of the early church. He, he was a zealot for, for his faith, and, and he had been trained at the highest levels in his Jewish faith, and, and he was a man that was on a mission to validate the faith of, of, the, of Israel, the one true living God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And when Jesus came along, Paul rejected Christ as the Messiah. So he did not accept him. And the early believers were called followers of the way, was one of the tags the Bible put on them. Paul set out to persecute them, to bring them to judgment. And remember, he stood beside Stephen, who was the first Christian martyr who was stoned to death. Paul held the cloaks of the men who stoned him to death. Paul then went and got permission from the high priest to go to Damascus to seek out these early followers and bring them to judgment and persecution. When God encountered him, the Bible says in Acts chapter nine, he's riding along on his horse on, his, on the road to Damascus when suddenly a great light from heaven shone so brightly that it blinded him and he fell off his horse. And then the voice of Jesus spoke to him. Why are you persecuting me? And he hollered, Lord, who, who are you, Lord? He said, I am Jesus Christ. Wow. They led him into a street called Straight in Damascus. For three days, he was blinded, laying there. A little humble servant by the name of Ananias was sent by the Holy Spirit to come and minister to, to Paul. And while Paul was there during those three days, it was so profound what happened to him. Three major revelations came into his life that brought transformation to Paul. And he was transformed from being one who was persecuting the church to becoming one of the greatest voices 
on behalf of the church and of Christ to the world. And we're still responding to that voice. 1,959 years later, when he said, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. So what was it? Let's look at them real quick. Matter of fact, Paul tells the, the church of Philippi in, in chapter four of, of the book of Philippians in verse nine, he says, examine my life, look at the things that I, I, the way I've lived and the things I've taught you, and then the God of peace will be with you when you examine those things. So let's examine him a little bit. What happened? What were the revelations that brought him to such a place of such confidence in times of crisis? Here we go, number one. When he heard that voice of God, it was so transformational to him because suddenly he had a revelation. Everyone can hear the voice of God. Now remember, there have been 400 years of silence. Not a prophet had spoken the word of God for 400 years. They had the written word, they had the law, they had the, the prophet's writings, they had the, the poetry writings of Psalm and, 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 and Solomon's writings of, of Proverbs. But there had not been a quote, a voice heard for 400 years. Now Jesus came with the very voice of God, but Saul rejected that. He, he did not allow that voice to influence his life. But on that encounter on the road to Damascus, he could not deny that reality. And that changed everything for him. Think about it. It went from, I'm seeking God from my religious ritual of my life and obeying the laws of God to now I can hear the voice of God. I can have a personal relationship with God. It went, it changed for Paul. It was no longer about religion. It was about a relationship because the creator had spoken to him. It became personal that day with him. And what a revelation that we can hear the voice of God and that God desires to speak to us and desires us to hear his voice. I love it what Jesus said in the Gospel of John. He said, he said, my sheep, he said, my sheep, they listen to my voice and I know them and they follow me. There's another passage in John that says, my sheep know my voice. We, we, we can discern his voice. Isn't that amazing that we have the ability to hear the voice of God? I, I mean, it's, it's, you know, I think we take for granted so much of, of, of this revelation. But when Paul got that revelation, it so changed him because he knew suddenly now that voice is there to speak into my life and to speak wisdom into my life, to speak truth into my life, to speak guidance into my life, to guide my pathway in my life. I have a voice that is there. Wow. The second revelation that hit him when he suddenly found himself now in the presence hearing the voice of God was, you know what he was expecting. He was expecting judgment. Because I'm gonna tell you one thing, if you were a strict adherence of the law and you violated the law, judgment came. He had violated the laws of God in, in his murdering Stephen. And he realized his whole pursuit of rejecting Christ was as far from God as it could be. So he was laying there on that expecting judgment and instead of judgment, he found mercy, he found grace, he found forgiveness, he, he experienced the love of God and now he said we all, everyone can know the love of God in a real and personal way. Wow, what a revelation for him. Because see, it was all about my duty, it was all about my law, it was all about walking in obedience, it was all about obeying 630 plus laws every day in my life so I can be found worthy in the sight of God. And now suddenly God says, no son, you don't understand. I love you so much I sent my son on the cross to die for you, to die for you. 
so that you could come into relationship with me. And it's no longer about your works. It's about your heart, your heart devotion, your heart relationship with me. What a transformational thought for Paul. He was set free. He was liberated by the love of God. And in that love, he found his true identity. He found his sense of purpose. When God spoke to him and said, listen, I'm going to use you to take my message of love and life to the world. And he didn't realize all of his past experiences had prepared him for it. I mean, Paul spoke multiple languages, one of the most highly educated men of his time. He also had Roman citizenship, which allowed him freedom to travel throughout all the Roman Empire without restriction. And if he was in Greece, he would speak with the Greeks, no matter where he was. He didn't realize, he, he thought he had one mission, but see, God really had a real mission for his life. He discovered that when he found himself lost in the love of God. He tried to describe that love. I love what he says here in, in the church at, in Ephesians, this passage in Ephesus. He says, I pray out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with the power through his spirit and inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have the power together with all Lord's holy people, here we go, to grasp how wide, long, high, and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Wow, can you, can you grasp suddenly how he's wave after wave that love coming over him as he's laying on that street, blinded physically, but suddenly his spiritual eyes are open to the reality of God's love and his heart is feeling a warmth he had never experienced before. Wow. And he realized God is a God of covenant as he was in a covenant of law. He is now in a covenant of love. Therefore, nothing can separate me from the love of God. And look what he writes to the church in, in Rome. He says this, for I am convinced, oh, I love this, that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither present nor future, nor any power, neither height nor depth, or anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And all God's people said, amen. Wow. He found his security in God's love, he found his identity in God's love, he found his purpose in God's love. He found his confidence in times of crisis in God's love because nothing can separate us from his love. Wow. Here's the third revelation hit him. He finally discovered that the presence of God was no longer confined only to one place in the temple, in the Holy of Holies. Remember that? In the Holy of Holies, where the Ark of the Covenant was kept, and only the chief high priest could walk into the presence of God once a year on the Day of Atonement to intercede for the people's sins. But remember when Jesus died on the cross and the veil of the temple was torn, the Spirit of God was symbolically at that moment too released into the world. And Paul suddenly now is experiencing wave after wave of God's love and he's sensing the fullness of the spirit coming upon him. And when you read Acts chapter nine, Ananias not only prayed for him to be saved and baptized him, but he was filled with the spirit of God. And suddenly he realizes now, every one of us can experience the presence of God. Think about it. Everyone can experience the presence of God in their life. He's not distant, he is near. He is indwelling with us, he is with us. My goodness gracious, you see why he was so confident in that? Because having the presence of God with you changes everything. He knew that Moses, that God has spoken to Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse six, he said to him, Moses, I will never leave you, nor I will ever forsake you. So be strong, I'm with you, son. When Joshua took over and had to lead the children of Israel out of the wilderness into the promised land over the Jordan River, God spoke to him and said, Joshua, be strong, be courageous. Now remember this, Joshua, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. I will be with you. 
So step out in courage. Suddenly this becomes real now to Paul. And it's a revelation that he wants to share for all of us to embrace. God is with us. Therefore, if God be for me, who can mess with me? Don't you love that translation, Romans 8, verse 37? If God be for me, who can mess with me? And, and you have that strength. You know, my grandfather had such a presence about him. When he would walk into a room, everyone knew he was in the room. There's just something about his presence. He was a big man anyways. He was like six foot four, had huge hands on him. Such a tender heart. He loved people so much. But he also loved to hunt. And I know this is, you're too sophisticated to even know what I mean when I'm telling you this story. That when I was a boy, we liked to chase raccoons with dogs up a tree. Okay? We'd turn dogs loose at night. And they'd go out and get on a trail of a, of a raccoon somewhere. Some of you need them around your house right now because they, they're tearing up your garbage cans. Get some of my grandfather's hound dogs. They'll take care of those raccoons for you. And so we're out one night in a strange wood and, 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 and we, we're treeing raccoons and suddenly the dog's tree way off and it's late and he tells me to stay where I am. I don't want to stay with him. I was never afraid in the woods, never afraid in the woods. Because I was always with grandpa. What, what have I got to be afraid of? I'm with grandpa. He can't handle anything. But that night he told me to stay put. And I said, oh, Grandpa, now I'm going to go. No, son, you wait right here, son. You'll slow me down. I'm going to go get the dogs. I'll be right back. You'll be fine. Just stay right here. He takes off, goes to the dogs. I had never experienced fear before, but that night it gripped me. As a father, he got away, and that light started to fade away with him. I'm standing there in the dark. I'm hearing things I've never heard before. I'm starting to see things I've never seen before. I picked up a stick to protect myself, backed up against a tree, and I'm ready, and I'm terrified. Oh, how happy I was when I heard those dogs stop barking. I knew that Grandpa had got them, and he was heading back. And then suddenly I saw a flicker of a light. And the more that light got brighter, the braver I got. And pretty soon I could see Grandpa, and I could hear him walking. I dropped the stick. I'm fine. No more fear. Grandpa's there. You know, he's near. Well, I got the fear. Grandpa's here. If there had been a bear in that woods, I wouldn't have worried about a bear. Grandpa would whip a bear. If Daniel Boone could whip a bear, Grandpa could whip Daniel Boone. I had nothing to fear. My grandpa would take care of everything. When you realize you have a heavenly father that is there overlooking you, he will take care of everything. So why, why are we fearful? Now you gotta understand, I've had this conversation with myself in the past months. Why are you anxious about anything? When you know that God is here to speak, guide, and direct. God is here in his love to overwhelm us and we're in covenant with him and he'll never forsake us in his presence is so near to us. I shared the story with Grandpa years later. He said, I, he said, son, I knew where you were the whole time. He said, I was listening for you. If you had ever cried out to me, I would have been right there. I want you to know the Lord is near. You have nothing to fear. And here, here's, here's, here's what transformed Paul. With these three revelations that came to him, that everyone can hear the voice of God, that, that every one of us can know the love of God and every one of us can experience the presence of God, he suddenly realized this. His voice will guide me. His love will comfort me. And his presence will protect me. Now think about that. Is that not a great foundation for our confidence? and having peace that separates us from the rest of the world that is, is being driven by this anxiety and this fear, and we stand out kind of bold and brave, and, and people are looking at us like, how can you be so relaxed and have so much peace? Well, hey, it's because of Jesus. It's because he loves us. He speaks to us, he comforts us. He, his presence is near to take care of us and to protect us. So then Paul, Paul turns to the church at Philippi and he coaches them up. And I want to coach you up for the next few minutes on how to strengthen your confidence in times of crisis. You ready? Here we go. The rest of this has been an introduction. Now we're getting to the message. It's going to be short and sweet though. So let's get after it. I got, I got three coaching tips 
that the Apostle Paul gives us. So Celebration Church, stay with me now on these coaching tips because you guys really love this first one, I know, because I've been with you when you've been worshiping and praising God. Paul writes in Philippians 4, and let, let's read this passage of together in Philippians 4. Let's read this. Rejoice in the Lord always, Paul says, and I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all, the Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. Can we stop there for a minute? Would, would you say that part with me? Uh, on all of our campuses, you're watching online, everybody at Celebration Church, everyone here at the Gardens campus, let's say this out loud. Do not be anxious about anything. Will you turn and tell somebody near you that? Remind them, do not be anxious about anything. Wow. Wouldn't our lives be so much better if we could just get hold of that? But he says, instead of being anxious, in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And founding brothers and sisters, whatever's true, whatever's noble, whatever's pure, whatever's right, whatever's lovely, whatever's admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Here we go. Three coaching points he gives us. First coaching point is keep your strength and your confidence is keep an attitude of praise in your life. Rejoice. Praise and worship invites the presence of God into your circumstances. So no matter what I'm facing, Paul said, I'm, I'm gonna rejoice. Remember he was in prison in Philippi in Acts chapter 16? He had been falsely accused, he was in the stocks, he had been beaten, it's the midnight hour, dark, what's he doing? He's singing praise and worship songs and hymns unto the Lord. He's praising God. He's praising God. God comes, shakes the whole prison, sets him free. He didn't understand why he had to be beaten and put in that prison, but he knew my response needs to be in every situation, I'm gonna choose to rejoice. He was intentional to not get focused on his circumstances and suddenly be overwhelmed by them, he let his focus go upward with praise. Praise will always lift. It always will lift our faith to look beyond our circumstances. Praise will always do that. Praise declares that, that all things are under God's authority. Now Lord, I, I don't understand why I'm in this situation, but I know you're in control. Everything's under your authority and I'm praising you for that because I know in the end you're working for my good, even in things that feel painful. And praise expresses our love and our trust in him. And that's why Paul could say in Romans 8, 28, I know that in all things what God's doing, he's working for my good. For those that love him are called according to his purpose. And Paul knew that my life is surrendered to his purpose so I can praise him. So when we make that choice, it lifts us beyond our circumstances where we now can have a peace and a confidence in Christ in the midst of this temporary crisis that we're in. The second key was obvious, don't be anxious for anything, but in everything through prayer. So prayer is important. And wouldn't it be great if prayer was our first response instead of our last response? You know, I mean, because it's, it's so easy when things first happen, we're starting to question why, what's going on, why is this Lord, why am I dealing with this Lord, why am I go to people and try to get some sympathy and support, and then finally we say, well, maybe we ought to pray about this. Well, hello, why don't we start with prayer? You know, and, and being a, a season of prayer. And actually, we should open every morning with prayer and close every night in prayer and never put an amen on your prayer. Just keep in communion with God throughout the day. You know? And the Lord knows that I have a short attention span. So I can't, I can't pray long prayers anyways. My wife, she can get in an attitude of prayer and pray in there for hours. I'm like, you know, what was that little dog in the Up movie or whatever it was, you know, squirrel, squirrel, whatever that thing was or something like that. I remember watching it with Jefferson years ago. And I said, oh, that reminds me of me. Hello. So God knows that, so I just, but I, I do wanna have my heart in an attitude of prayer before the Lord because when I keep my heart in an attitude of prayer, I, I, I love what Paul did. Remember when Paul was uh, uh, in Acts chapter 27, he was on the, a ship heading for Rome 
They hit hurricane force winds for three days, could not see the sun for three days. They were terrified. They knew they were gonna be destroyed at sea. God spoke to Paul because Paul was in prayer. Paul got up before the crew, said, crew, I got a word for you. I've had a word from God. We're all gonna make it, but the ship will be destroyed. <laughs> they weren't very confident. The ship was destroyed and they all made it. Paul's building a fire on the island of Malta trying to help those that they had dragged out of the sea. And suddenly a poisonous snake leaps up out of the fire and clings onto his hand. Now what in the world? Most of us at that moment, after what we've been through and trying to rescue all these people on the ship and everything else, and by the way, it doesn't matter who you travel with because I'm glad those boys were glad they were on that ship with Paul that day. And there were 376 of them, so it was a pretty good sized ship. But we'd probably say, no, Lord, I've done all this for you, I've done all that for you, and I'm here and here and everything else, and then why are you letting this happen to me? A poisonous snake? Hello. Paul, Paul just went, shook it off into the fire. I was walking through the bush of Africa years ago. I stepped over a log, and when I did, it rocked it a little bit because my heel caught it, and out of it came a cobra. This cobra came straight up in the middle of my stride. There's a cobra. You would have thought I was a drum major for Florida A&M. <laughs> my head was back, my knees were high, and I was high-stepping it out of there. I'm gonna tell you what, you talking about the move of the spirit? I was booking. If you could put a clock on me, I'd have had a new 40 yard record for my, my speed, I'm gonna tell you that. I didn't stop, I wasn't messing around with that cobra. That cobra came up, whoom, I was gone. But Paul, he just went boom. Why, because he knew he was on a mission. God was sending him to Rome. That snake's not gonna stop his mission. Nothing to raise itself up against you gonna stop the mission God has for you. You remember, he who began a good work, you will carry it through to completion. That was Paul's confidence. So I just, I love the fact that Paul was such a man of prayer. Prayer will always lift us beyond ourselves. I love that. And prayer draws us into communion with God. It's in the times of prayer that we can sense and hear the voice of God. Here's what I love about prayer too. Prayer is our greatest defense against anxiety. Prayer is our greatest defense against anxiety. And then he gives us our third key. So first key is praise, second key is prayer, third key is focus. Paul said, focus your minds on the truth of God and the things that are praiseworthy, noble, excellent. Focus. Because you know Paul had to battle with this because of his past life and all the things he had done in his past life. You know the enemy kept trying to throw up his past to him all the time. Remember what he, what he said in, in the word of God in Philippians earlier in, a, in chapter three, I for, have to forget what is behind so I can press towards what is before me. I press towards what God has called me to. I can't let myself dwell on my past failures and weaknesses and my unbelief. So I have to, I have to guard my mind. I have to take every thought captive and make it subject to Christ. I cannot let the the thinking of man influenced my thinking. I have to let God's word and his truth influence my thinking. Therefore, I'm gonna focus on it. And here's what I've realized. Whatever you focus on, you become. What we focus on, we become. When we focus on this truth, it's liberating. God's truth will always lift our minds to the eternal. And God's truth will also always lead us to freedom and victory. So that's my introduction. Here's my message in 20 seconds. Are you ready? Don't let the anxiety, the spirit of anxiety that's roaming around our world right now take you captive because you are in Christ and Christ is in you. And you can hear the voice of God, you can experience the love of God that will comfort you and you can also have that presence of God that will be there to protect you. So you have nothing to fear. You have nothing to fear. You can be confident. And I'm going to tell you what, I think when you, when you desire 
to live with such confidence like this, it's going to make you stand out in this moment and your life will have more influence than you ever thought possible because we were created by God and for God for these kind of moments. We excel in times of crisis because we have Christ in us, the hope of glory. And all God's people said, amen, amen, and amen. Well, I don't know about you, but I wanna keep reminding myself Every one of us can now hear the voice of God. Every one of us can know his love. And every one of us can experience his presence. As followers of Christ, this is just a reminder for us because it's a reminder of getting our focus back on these fundamentals, amen? If you have never really fully surrendered your life to Christ, You've not had the privilege of knowing these truths and these revelations, but God wants to bring them to you today. He loves you so much. He has a divine purpose and mission for your life. And he's reaching out to you right now, even in this moment, in this message. So would you bow your heads with me and we'll pray. Everyone join us online, all of our campuses, those joining us in Zimbabwe. I want to pray a prayer over you first and a prayer of God's blessing and care and comfort and encouragement to you. Then I want to give people an opportunity that have never prayed to receive Christ to open their life up to receive him today. Let me pray this first prayer of blessing. Father, I pray a prayer of blessing on your people. And I pray, God, that we'll be reminded of these revelations that came to Paul that transformed his life, that let him help transform his world. Father, I pray for those revelations to be heightened in our lives of, of the revelation that you are speaking to us and you desire to commune with us. And your love is there, forgiving, transforming, and helping us be secure in our identity and our purposes in you. And then we can be so assured of your presence You'll never leave us. You'll never forsake us. Therefore, we can be strong and courageous in every challenge of life we face. I pray your blessing over everyone in Jesus' name. Now with our heads still bowed in an attitude of prayer, if you've never prayed to receive Christ, I'm gonna give you the opportunity. The Bible says if you'll believe in your heart and make that confession with your mouth, at that moment, Christ comes into your life and he begins that work of transformation from the inside out. If you want to pray that prayer with us today, I want to ask you to pray right now. And we're going to pray it out loud at all of our campuses. And you join us online, everyone in, in Celebration Church in Zimbabwe. I want you all just to repeat after me this simple prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, we love you. We acknowledge that you are the Son of God. You came to bring us salvation. And we ask you to come into our hearts today Forgive us of all of our past and our sins. Fill us with your love. Fill us with your spirit. And help us to walk with you all the days of our life. We can make a commitment from this day forward to honor you and to serve you with all of our hearts. And we seal this commitment in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And everybody said, amen. We love you. God's blessings be upon you.
and trust that you've been blessed by this service. Stay connected with us through our social media platforms, Facebook and WhatsApp. As we go, stay safe, stay blessed, stay connected.